So anyways, I want to thank everybody that came out to the, uh, the shows at the Fountain Street Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, it is and it is continuing to be one of my favorite gigs I've ever done. Um, I know I always say I'm going to put up pictures. Like I didn't put up a picture of my drum kit like I said I was going to. And I'll tell you why. Because, uh, you know, I got these simple stands. And the ones that I want, I just wanted the single bracket ones. I don't like those double bracket like I'm going to go play in a fucking hurricane. They weigh 9,000 goddamn pounds. Um, I accidentally ordered those instead of the ones I wanted. So I had to return those, and now today I'm going to pick up the right ones. I just want to have it all set up when you see it. I want you to see it, right? I want it to have the fucking right look. I'm not going to have it like, you know, here's the car I bought, and I don't have this, the, the fucking the tires on it. So... um but speaking of drums, um, my booking agent, my Reuben Kincaid, is, uh, you know, is telling him how much fun I have when I go on the road if I find a place where I can go play drums. He goes, you know, we could put it in your rider that, you know, anytime you do a couple nights at a theater, they can set up a drum kit there. I go, get the fuck out of here. That sounds like some diva shit. He goes, and he goes, dude, they, they have music acts there all the time. It's no big deal. So I was like, all right. So I show up at the Fountain Street Church, and uh, they had a fucking they had a they had this Yamaha kit with this fucking horrific white trash, like leopard skin wrap. I don't even know what I don't even know what to call it. It was like somewhere between the Stray Cats way back in the day and uh, Poison, maybe you know. It actually looked like the fucking stretchy pants that the slutty girls would wear at the heavy metal concerts. It was the same kind of print. And I'm looking at those things going like, what the fuck are these? And she goes, don't worry. Everybody always says that. Sit down and play them. And the kick sounded amazing. And I was able to, thanks to my drum teacher, you know, I have a game plan when I try to tune something up. And I got the snare to sound great. And um, I went in on this fucking hilarious. I go in there on Saturday to play. I'm like about an hour before the doors open. So I went in there and I was fucking wailing on him. And when I got off the kit, I, you know, I, wa- I was literally like in like the place where the priest dresses and shit, you know, puts on all the fucking flowing ponchos and shit. And I walked out and there was no one in the church. And I walked in the parking lot and there was like fucking six of the security guys just standing out there. <laughs> I was like, sorry, sorry. It was still a lot. Would have been great if they actually had him out on the stage. I would have left them there for the show. wouldn't have bugged me, but uh, it would have sounded fucking unbelievable, um, this giant church. And I didn't realize because, you know, last time I played there, I only played one night. It kind of came in town. I did it. I was like, what the hell was that? That was fucking incredible. And then I left. But um, this time, you know, I was there for like uh, two days, three nights, and I was able to read up on like the history of it. Listen to this shit. This is all the people that performed there because there was no bigger venue. That was the biggest venue in the, uh, I guess, Western Michigan or whatever, or at least in Grand Rapids. So if anybody big came there, they went there. Everyone, Winston Churchill spoke there. Helen Keller spoke there. Blind and deaf, learned how to fucking read and write and speak somehow. Figure that one out. Um, Who else? Uh, Amelia Earhart, Malcolm X. Did I say Winston Churchill? Duke Ellington, Ella Fitzgerald, Dave Brubeck, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, U2 in like 1984 played there. I think Zeppelin and Pink Floyd was obviously on their first tours. And uh, that's, just, that's just what I can remember. I'm trying to picture when I was looking at the wall, who else I saw there. I mean, it was fucking incredible. Eleanor Roosevelt. And they had, like, pictures of them. And then, like, their little thank you notes and shit. It was fucking ridiculous. B.B. Uh, King. And then me. <laughs> I think I said that in the video that I took, which I will actually post. And I promise you, I'll give you a picture of my, uh, my drum kit uh, this week. But anyways, let's let me talk about uh, what should I talk about here? How about this? How about how great fucking Grand Rapids is? And it's one of my favorite cities. I was there with Dean Del Rey 
and he was fucking murdering all week. And he had, he had a bunch of fans came out too, people flying in to see him. And then he went on to Detroit to go play some rock club like after uh, after our show Saturday night. But there was this place, I of course I of course forget the fucking name of it. Um, but they had all these old video games in there. The fuck was it called? And why is my stomach still growling? I had a bowl of cereal. I'm trying to starve myself before the fucking acting gig. Um, oh, by the way, thank you for all your guys' suggestions sec, slash criticism of my, my dieting or whatever. This guy goes, dude, you can't say you're crushing it. You know, you crushed it if at night you're still having a drink or two. It's like, I, I, you fucking, you think I don't realize that, mom? Yes, I realize that. Um, but anyways, uh, what was it called? Stella's or some shit? I can't fucking remember. But... Uh, we went down there, and they, evidently they had a great burger, which I didn't have. Went to this healthy place and got this fucking wrap. Ugh, right? And a water. Water! And then uh, we went over there because they had all these pinball machines and shit, and me and Dean are fucking old as shit, and we walked in there. They only had one pinball machine, but they had all these great um, old uh, video games. And we showed up, right? And we sounded like two fucking kids. D just goes, they got asteroids. <laughs> I think we blew 10 bucks playing that. Um, I've never been one of those guys. never been a video game guy. Just haven't been. Because they're so fucking awesome. They were like addicting. But that is something. Remember back in the day when you would watch MTV Cribs and then like these fucking people would have these video games in their, uh, in their houses and uh, I used to always think like I always feel like you buy those and then you never fucking use them like you use it for like the first day and then it's just like oh wait I gotta go to work you know I have to work so I can pay for this big giant stupid machine that I could have just pumped a couple of quarters into and let somebody else own and deal with the fucking maintenance however if I was ever gonna buy one it would be asteroids and my number two is a game that not a lot of people know about and um I think for the most part, they've all disappeared. Uh, it was a fucking great game. At least I loved it. It was called Elevators. And it was basically, it, I, if I vaguely remember it, it was like spy versus spy kind of thing. You were dressed in white and all the bad guys were dressed in black, almost kind of looking the, like dressed like the spy versus spy from uh, Mad Magazine. And you had to so you get in an elevator and on each floor there were these bad guys and as you passed the floor they'd be shooting at you from the right or, or from the left and you had to get all the way up to the top of the building and get something and then come back down again and the worst was when you were going back down again and you'd be shooting at the guy and the guy would duck and he'd lay down on the floor and as you went by when you couldn't raise your gun up and it was just your head at floor level he'd blow your fucking brains out um i used to play that one i'd buy either one of those i guess no i wouldn't I wouldn't have a fucking waste of money. But I, whatever, we had a great time, and I got a killer picture of Dean in his total fucking rock star pose playing the game. And uh, I think he already tweeted it out. So if you look at Dean Del Rey's Twitter thing, you can find that shit. So we did that, and I want to thank people at Dr. Grin's Comedy Club. I went down there and uh, did a quick spot. You know, went up, did some jokes or whatever. And it was funny when Dean was up there, he fucking started trashing this woman who was sitting in the front row because she wouldn't shut up. And I said to the other comics go there going, I've like, it was one of those deals as a comedian, you'll be on stage and someone's talking and commenting on your jokes. And then you don't realize most of the crowd can't hear it. So you, you're kind of supposed to ignore it, I guess, even though it's driving you nuts. So he just fucking snaps and trashes her. And I was sitting in the back of the club. I said to the other comedians, it's like, you know, what's funny. We couldn't even hear what she said. Um, you probably should have just kept going. I go, I've made that mistake 20,000 fucking times. Then I went up next and I did the exact same thing. Exact same thing. And I fucking trashed her. And then she got mad, you know, said she was offended by f some fucking joke I did about the troops or some shit like that. It's like, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. I know when you got offended, you fucking egomaniac. When I looked at her, I said something to the effect of, why would you think that you have anything interesting to say? was one of those lines, which was just really, you know, now that I've said it out loud and I've kind of gotten out of the emotion, it was, uh, it was really mean. I went mean. That's what I did. I went fucking mean.